Every week for the last 35 years, we've met people on the show who tell us the impact they feel nature and gardening has on their lives and their sense of how they fit in the world. I'm meeting with a prominent psychotherapist and psychiatrist whose work proves that what we feel intuitively about nature is backed up by neuroscience. So you've come all the way to Australia to talk to us about your research and for so many of us at home, we already know about how we feel in nature, but your research is backing this up. It is, yeah, very much backing it up. Um, and more than that, I think I've I endeavoured to bring different kinds of research together. So looking at the many different levels on which nature and gardens can really influence our health and our well-being, both mental and physical. Gardening is a caring relationship, fundamentally. And that's what interested me, particularly as a psychiatrist and psychotherapist, was looking at what that experience of attaching to a place, attaching to plants, attaching to trees, really means for people and how stabilising that can be. What does being in the garden do for your brain? Quite a lot of different things. If we start with the, the let's say, the most immediate effect, um, when we enter into a green space like this, this wonderful, beautiful fern gully, within 30 seconds, our heart rate and our blood pressure has eased a little, it's lowered a little. So that's, that's a very quick result. After about 30 minutes, uh, the levels of our stress hormone cortisol, they will be also decreasing to a much more healthier level. What is it about the beauty of flowers and their impact on us? Well, I think that's an essential ingredient of how gardens influence us. Um, you know, we get a concentrated dose of beauty in gardens, particularly at certain times of year. When we have a beautiful experience, um, it's the deep emotional centres in our brain that are activated. And they're activated in a way that's very similar to romantic love. This is uh, bound up with release of uh, our endorphins, dopamine, which is energizing, motivating, and also serotonin, our sort of background feel-good neurotransmitter. So beauty is, I think, a form of nourishment. And I think it's underestimated, actually, the power of that. We don't realize it unless we're deprived of beauty, I think. What most people don't realize is that our care system in the brain is bound up with our endorphin system and actually a garden is a cared for space. So we get a little release of our natural opioids when we're engaged in these small acts of nurture and care. Because of course that brings with it a sense of calm, uh, a little bit of a mood boost, and, and a sense of sort of wanting to go back and do more. But it's not just about that positive sharing, it's also those other actions of getting into the garden and and removing and yes. hacking and yes. digging yes. in yes. and chopping. Really. Like, I call that destructiveness in the service of growth. Bringing in the big gun. All right. Because I think it's very liberating. You know, sometimes we really need to let off some negative energy. Um, and in the garden, you can get out those secateurs, you can dig the earth, you can rip up the weeds, um, cut back the brambles. It's a perfectly good way, a productive way of being destructive. Is gardening part of your personal life? Uh, yes, it is. That probably doesn't surprise you. I married my husband, Tom, when I was in my mid-twenties. He was already a passionate gardener. Uh, he was setting out on his career as a landscape designer. And we started making a garden together. The garden is in Hertfordshire, about 40 kilometres from London. And after decades of work, it's grown to be known in garden and landscape design circles all around the world. Sue and her husband are also in the process of building a nearby plant library and community space, designed to bring people together through gardening. I think gardening can be a very good way of connecting people. 
There's quite a bit of research on outcomes in things like urban farms and community gardens. And it's the social element, it's the sharing of food, the sharing of the joy and beauty and so on. Where's my red flower? All right, let's go find your red flower. Is it over by the fence over there, Carly? Yes. All right. This is what brings people together. And people just do connect with each other better. They tend to be a bit more generous and open within natural settings. And it's been shown in, in a, a whole series of different kinds of experiments. There's so many people doing good things out in communities in this broader space. How important is your research when it comes to bringing all of this together? Generally, across the world, levels of anxiety and depression have been increasing. We've seen growing levels of disconnection from nature alongside this. There's not a linear relationship between them, but they're not unconnected. The way I see it is that it all arises through a neglect of what people need to thrive, as well as neglecting what the planet needs to thrive. So, you know, we are part of nature. That shouldn't surprise us. Yeah, we are nature, we are aren't we? Nature. Yeah. I think the, the science is, is important. It's only part of the story. But I hope what will convince our planners, you know, our departments of health and so on, without this quantitative evidence, it's not going to be taken seriously. You know, why we need gardens in hospitals, for example. There's some great research showing people are discharged from hospital sometimes a day sooner than they would have been. They need less pain relief if they have uh, a view of a garden or trees or have plants around them. So, so we need this hard data. It's not the whole story. And, and I think also people's personal stories are very important in that, people's life journeys. Um, uh, the many different ways that gardening has helped them. You know, we love stories, we love narrative. They often are what, what move us. So I think the science is only part of it. And that's exactly what we are as a show. We're, we're collating these stories of our yeah, viewers yeah. and we all relate to what yeah, you're yeah, talking well, about. It's been such a joy to, to hear what you're doing and to know that you're, you're working on our side. <laughs> sure am. Thanks. Thanks so much. Oh, it's been a huge pleasure, Costa.